Thanks for joining us here today. If this is your first time or you're returning to us, let me encourage you to go to JesusIsTheRock.org. While you're there, give us an update on how God is working in your life. Now, if He's working life change through our ministries, let me encourage you to give to us financially on the website by clicking the giving button at the top right hand corner of the screen. Thank you so very much for tuning in today, and welcome to Church Wednesday night, I talked to John after service, and I said, Let's look, try to find a, some kind of YouTube clip, something just on tragedies that's been going on in America and around the country. And so he sat down and looked real quick, didn't really find anything. And I went home and kind of looked through and everything I was finding was seven and eight minutes. And that's, that's not really what I'm looking for. So I said, well, maybe I'll just scrap it, you know. And so I woke up Thursday morning and just reached over and turned on the television and this was on for about 30 minutes and all I did I actually took my phone and just took pictures of the t television took video and sent it to Jared and I said would you just put this together for me and the sad thing is 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 Thursday was no exceptional day just about any day of the week any week of the month, any month of the year, you can turn on your television set or you can open up Facebook or social media somehow and you can find out that this country and this world is in trouble. Somebody's being shot and killed every hour of every day. Terrorist attacks are happening everywhere. Um... I mean, we see it, we're seeing this increased pattern of violence and terrorism and sin. If you have your Bibles, turn to Jeremiah chapter 8. I want to warn you, though, that the text this morning reads like tomorrow's headlines. This warning was given to the nation of Israel through the prophet Jeremiah from God, but I'm telling you, it could just as easily be given to America today. In fact, I believe it is being given to America today. Jeremiah chapter 8, beginning with verse number 4. Jeremiah, say to the people, so this is God telling Jeremiah, here's what I want you to tell the people. This is what the Lord says. When people fall down, they don't get up again. When they discover they're on the wrong road, they don't turn back. Then why do these people stay on their self-destructive path? Why do the people of Jerusalem or America refuse to turn back? They cling tightly to their lives and will not turn around. I listen to their conversations, and they don't hear a word of truth. Is anyone sorry for doing wrong? Does anyone say, what a terrible thing I've done? No. All are running down the path of sin as swiftly as a horse galloping into battle. Even the stork that flies across the sky knows the time of her migration. As do the turtle dove and the swallow and the crane. They all return at the proper time each year, but not my people. They do not know the Lord's laws. How can you say we are wise because we have the word of the Lord when your teachers have twisted it by writing lies? These wise teachers will fall into the trap of their own foolishness. For they've rejected the word of the Lord. They're not wise after all. I'll give their wives to others and their farms to strangers from the least to the greatest. Their lives are ruled by greed. Yeah, even my prophets and priests are like that. They're frauds. They often, they offer superficial treatments for my people's mortal wounds. I love that verse. I hate it, but I love it. They offer superficial treatments for my people's mortal wounds. They try to put a band-aid on a cancer. 
They give assurance of peace where there is no peace. Have you watched the presidential debates? They give assurance of peace where there is no peace. Are they ashamed of these disgusting actions? Not at all. They don't even know how to blush. Therefore, they will lie among the slaughtered. They will be brought down when I punish them, says the Lord. I will consume them. There will be no more harvest of figs and grapes. Their fruit trees will all die. Whatever I gave them will soon be gone. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the people will say, why should we wait here to die? Come, let's go to the fortified towns and die there. For the Lord our God has decreed our destruction. He's given us a cup of poison to drink because we sinned against the Lord. We hoped for peace, but no peace came. We hoped for a time of healing, but found only terror. The snorting of the enemy's war horses can be heard all the way from the land of Dan in the north. The neighing of their stallions make the whole land tremble. They're coming to devour the land and everything in it, cities and people alike. I will send these enemy troops among you like poisonous snakes you cannot charm. Sound like ISIS? They will bite you and you will die. I, the Lord, have spoken. My grief is beyond healing. My heart is broken. This is Jeremiah weeping over this nation. Listen to the weeping of my people. It can be heard all across the land. Has the Lord abandoned Jerusalem? The people ask. Is our king no longer there? Oh, why have they provoked my anger with their carved idols and their worthless foreign gods, says the Lord. The harvest is finished. The summer's gone. The people cry, yet we are not saved. I hurt with the hurt of my people. I mourn and am overcome with grief. Is there no medicine in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why is there no healing for the wounds of my people? Verse number 22, I like the way the King James puts it. It says in, in the New Living, it says, is there no medicine in Gilead? In the King James, it says, is there no balm in Gilead? It's the same, same thing. Is there no balm in Gilead? And that's, that's what I've titled the message today. Is there no balm in Gilead? Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. The weeping prophet. It's pretty obvious by our text this morning. He deserves the title. In fact, I'm going to be honest with you. I think any true prophet of God today would have to be a weeping prophet. You can't watch the headlines today without wanting to weep. Without saying, where are we going? What are we doing? I watched a news commentator a while back, and they were talking about all of these events. They were, it was kind of like the headlines you saw this morning. They were talking about police brutality and rioting in the streets and terrorism and shootings and sin and all of this rampant things. And this commentator, this is what caught my ear. This is probably what started this message. This commentator looked at the camera and he said, questions, questions everywhere. But are there any answers? Boy, that just rolled all over me. Questions, questions everywhere. But are there any answers? We find Jeremiah lamenting over the sins and the destructions of his people. This once great nation of Israel is now a weak, sickly, enslaved group of people. Sounds again like America. Jeremiah is their pastor. He's their leader. He's, he's grieving over the sin sick nation. Verse 21, he says, I hurt with the hurt of my people. I mourn and I'm overcome with grief. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? 
Why is there no healing for the wounds of my people? Is there no balm? What is a balm? A balm is an ointment or a salve. People would take an evergreen tree. Let me ask you this. How many of you have ever used aloe vera plant? Well, most of you? Okay. All right, good. I grew up with aloe vera plant. I didn't care if I had a headache or a hangnail. My mama would go break aloe vera plant off. I mean, it was, it was the cure for everything. But the stuff, I've got like five at my house now. I mean, if you get a burn on your hand or a cut or something like that, if you get something that's hurting, you can break that aloe vera plant off and squeeze it, and that sappy-looking balm will come out of it, and instantly the pain will stop. It's an amazing thing. And that's kind of where this balm was. It came from an evergreen tree. It may have been aloe vera. I don't know. But they would, they would compress it and they would break its limbs and they would grind its leaves until out of it would come this dripping substance called a balm or an ointment. And they would apply this balm to their cuts, their sores, some would even drink it uh, because uh, it, they felt it would cure certain diseases. Same thing with aloe vera. You can buy aloe vera in a gallon jug now. Drink it, and, and it helps all sorts of things. So it was, it was sort of a, a cure-all, a miracle drug, this balm. And, and here stands this prophet of God, and he cries, Is there no balm? Is there no medicine? Is there no cure for the people of Israel? Don't, don't you care, God? How many of us have, have prayed that prayer? God, don't you care that I'm hurting here? Don't you care about what I'm going through? Don't you care about my struggles? Anybody ever prayed that prayer? God, I, I don't even, you know, even if you don't answer, I just want to know you care. I just want to know that you know what I'm going through and that you care. How many believers, how many Christians today who were once on fire for God have fallen by the wayside? How many of our churches that were once a lighthouse in the community have all but closed their doors? How many of our preachers who were mighty men of God have fallen by the wayside? Is there no balm? Is there no cure? Is there no ointment or solution? Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no balm in America? Is there no bomb in our life? Maybe there's some sin in your life. Maybe there's some addiction you struggle with. Maybe there's some habit you can't get free of. Is there no bomb? Is there no cure? Is there no solution? Some of you, maybe you ask that. You, you have this thing that you hang up on and you say, you know, I, I do good in, in every area of my life except this one thing. Is there no cure? Is there no way? Questions, questions everywhere, but are there any answers? How many, how many of us have lost loved ones that we pray for day and night that they'll be saved and delivered and set free? But listen to me, the truth is they won't be saved. They won't be delivered. They won't be set free. Not until we find a bomb. Not until we find a cure, some medicine, some solution for a sin-sick world. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no bomb in America? Is there no bomb for our country, for our government, for our family, for, for our situation, for, for ISIS? I mean, ISIS is this, this latest terrorist group now that, that's making news all over and, and everybody's saying questions, questions everywhere, but are there any answers? What do we do about this? We're having summit meetings and all these meetings of doing this and doing that, shootings and killings everywhere. Everybody's looking for answers. But I tell you, there'll be no answers until we find a bomb. See, here's where I think we as believers and churches have gotten off track. We're still trying to restore church splits with committee meetings. We're, we're still trying to counsel fallen preachers back into the pulpit. We're still trying to talk our loved ones into getting saved. 
We're trying to convince them. We're still trying to negotiate our way out of terrorism. We're trying to pay our way now out of global warning. I mean, I saw Bill Gates is dumping, you know, millions, if not billions, into doing this. We're trying to see the problem is we're not wrestling against flesh and blood here, but against powers and principalities and rulers in high places. And these things are not going to happen until the church rises up and begins to pull down the stronghold that the Bible talks about and binds a strong man. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. What a promise. God said that through the prophet Isaiah. If my people will just humble themselves, we can't get past the first one. If you'll just humble yourselves and pray and seek my face and turn for your wicked ways. I mean, that's a checklist you couldn't get Washington to even look at. Humble myself. Pray. We got prayer out of schools. We got prayer out of the ball game. We got prayer out of the courthouse. We got prayer. Pray. There is a ball. One of the big problems is too many preachers, too many believers, too many churches just refuse to preach Jesus anymore. We want to talk about issues and theology and higher powers and vague concepts. Even in the church, we get so caught up in being politically correct. I don't care about being politically correct. I want to be Jesus correct. I want to do what honors Him. I'm not running for office anywhere. I have a job. I don't have to be politically correct. But I believe we're going to, if we're going to see our marriages healed and our churches healed and our loved ones saved, we're going to have to return to a meat and potatoes gospel. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. If I be lifted up, your job is to lift me up. We keep trying to show people the gospel, not realizing they're blind. We keep trying to show, if I come to you and, and you're blind, and I have a picture of Jesus, and I say, hey, how do you like this? Now I like my picture of Jesus back here. How do you like that picture? You say, well, pastor, I'm blind. And I say, oh, 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 all right. Well, let me get it out of here and hold it up a little closer. But you don't understand, pastor. I'm blind. Well, let me turn it this way. Pastor, I'm blind. Let me put it in a program for you. We'll do a little skit around it. You don't understand, Pastor. I'm blind. I'm blind. I'm blind. And that's why we make our family mad every Thanksgiving. And we go back and make them mad Christmas. And they don't even invite us to Easter. Because we keep trying to show them a Jesus they can't see. They have scales on their eyes, and, and, and until we pray and bind the strong man, see the God, little g God of this world has blinded them. And if we're ever going to see them saved and healed and set free, then we're going to have to bind up the one who's blinded them. Who's blinded them? They can't see that. We have, to, we have to bind up the God of this world and loose the scales from their eyes. And lo and behold, they see Jesus. And when they see Jesus, they get saved. They get healed. They get set free. That man, that woman, that teenager that you think is a professional rejecter. You think they will never be saved. They're never going to do right. I've tried and tried and tried. I'm telling you, they're not professional rejectors. They're not reprobate. They're not outcasts. They're just blind. You let the scales fall from their eyes and they'll crawl like a baby to find Jesus. You say, that sounds great. How do we do it? Is there not a bomb? Is there not a medicine? What is the, what is the medicine? What is the ointment? What is the bomb that will cause scales to fall from their eyes? The answer is, yes, there is. There is a bomb in Gilead. There is a cure for your loved ones. There is a cure for your marriage, for your children. There is a cure for your addiction. 
There's a cure for your problem. But if we're going to find it, we're going to have to get out of the flesh and get into the spirit. And we're going to have to bind the strong man who's destroying our lives. Where's this bomb? Where do we find it? Some of you sitting here today think, you know what? I'd drain my savings account if I could find it. If I could go to the drugstore and buy it. I'd take out a loan if I could go out here to Fred's or Walmart and pick up some of this balm. But to find this balm, you've got to go with me back to Jerusalem. And you've got to picture for a moment a sin-sick nation. Sin is running rampant. The curse of the law is upon the people. They were plagued by sin. The stench of bloody bulls and goats fills the air because they're bringing sacrifices and it, it lingers in the air. The blood runs from the altars into the streets. God even says in one place, He says, I'm sick of the sacrifices of these people. The blood of bloody bulls and goats comes up as a stench in my nostrils. I'm tired of seeing sin run rampant and then people bring their sacrifices and the blood runs in the streets. But in the midst of all this sin, like an oasis in the desert, there stands an evergreen. A pure, spotless lamb who for three and a half years walked in this land doing good, bringing people joy and peace and healing, when suddenly for no reason he's cut down in his prime. He would be tortured, beaten like few men before or since. He went through the, the burning and the crushing and the grinding of his limbs being mangled and his body being beaten. But how many know out of that crushed body there came dripping a substance? There came a dripping substance, a balm that would open blind eyes and set captives free. There is a balm in Gilead. It's called the blood of Jesus Christ. The evergreen, the one that stands there in a world full of sin. But when he was broken and crushed and grinded, out of his body came dripping the balm of Gilead. The only thing that could save a sin sick nation when it was applied at, uh, then and when it's applied today, lost people get saved. Addicted people get set free. Broken people get healed. Broken marriages get restored. There is a bomb in Gilead. There is an answer for America and his name is still Jesus. He is the only hope for America. Not a presidential candidate. Not a Congress, not a Senate, not this, this referendum or that one or this thing, or we're going to do this, we're going to do that. The only answer for America is Jesus. And it's time for the church to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. Start applying the blood of Jesus to our lives and our families and our churches and our nation and our country, our people, our leaders, start binding the God of this world that's blinded us. There is a bomb in Gilead. And it's called the blood of Jesus Christ. What area of your life do you need the bomb applied to? I can say, Mom, I got a toothache. Shit, break off aloe vera. <laughs> I skinned my knee, break off aloe vera. We had aloe vera plants all over the front porch. Like I said, I've got three or four outside my house now. And I take after her. Somebody comes in, they got something hurt, I'll be right back. <laughs> Snap that thing, squeeze it, and here it goes. It's a bomb. It's an ointment. And I'm telling you, in the world that we live in today, there's not but one bomb. There's not but one thing that's going to cure this thing. Questions, questions everywhere. News anchors, politicians, presidents, Congress are scratching their head. What are we going to do? 
What do we do about Syrian refugees trying to come into this country? Do we let them? Do we not? What do we do about ISIS? How? What about if they come in with the Syrians? How many are already here? Why does a husband and wife walk into a place at a Christmas party and massacre people? Why do people in France walk into this? Why, why is all this happening? Why are parents killing their kids and kids killing their parents? Why are black people killing white people? White people killing black people. And people killing police officers. And police officers killing civilians. Because we are a sin-sick world. And there has to be a bomb somewhere. And the only bomb, the only answer that will work is Jesus Christ. We've tried the rest. Get a strong military. Give all the money to the poor. Make everybody the same. Do this. Do that. Try this strategy. I'll do this. If I'm president, I'll do that. It doesn't matter. You've got a picture that you're trying to show a sin sick world, a blind nation. The only thing that will help is for the scales to fall from our eyes and let us see Jesus. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. ISIS is no problem for Jesus. Terrorism is no problem for Jesus. Poverty is no problem for Jesus. Sickness is no problem for Jesus. Depression and, and addiction and anger and jealousy is no problem for Jesus. We just need the balm of the blood of Jesus Christ applied to our lives. We just have to go back to basics, church. We've got to quit trying to counsel this thing and have summit meetings and business meetings and church meetings and community meetings and meetings on this trying to figure out what can't be figured out. Questions, questions everywhere. This is what they're saying. Questions, questions everywhere. But are there any answers? And we've got to stand up and say, yes, there is an answer and his name is Jesus. And he is the only hope for this sin sick world. He's the only hope. Bow your heads with us. Lord, there are no doubt people, even in this house today. Again, we are incredibly glad that you joined us here today at Church of God. I encourage you to go to the website. There you can find any of our archive podcasts. You can send us an email about how God's working in your life or a prayer request. Or you can give to our ministries financially by clicking the giving button at the top right hand corner of the screen. Have a blessed day.